power of her desire. It's a blue line is shown is the power of her desire. By this you get your super ego, all your conditions. Whatever has been your desire, your past, whatever you have been asking for, and whatever has been hidden within you is all expressed in that blue stuff there called as super ego. Now when the people of your category, which are superior most people of any nation, who are the subtlest in any nation whatsoever, whether they are here or in Tehran or in China, just the same thing. They are the people who can see that this horrible thing like ego is before us. They can see clear. First they see it in others and then they start seeing the reflection in them. So they take to another side, run away from it, run away from reality. All this is start an anti-culture movement. This culture is nonsensical. They can see it. Why do they do it? Because they can see it. It's so artificial. <coughs> All this artificiality they can see. So they think that takes to something else by which you run away from this ego. But actually you cannot run away from it. You run away to the other side, call as super ego. On the left, uh, left hand side it moves. But actually in the head it is more on the right hand. This super ego is nourished by all our lethargic habits. For example, <coughs> we are lethargic. When I came here, I was surprised. Some of those people told me that I am successfully unemployed. I got a shock of my life. I said, now what sort of people I am facing with? They think it's a success to be unemployed. I said, it's a problem. And that was super ego speaking. Why should you work? Why do you need no money? What is the need to work? Why to have action? Just sit down and dream. Take some nice drugs. Go on top of a hill. Take the drugs. Lie down there. And just think you are in heaven. Finished. Imagination. That also has worked out. People are out of it now. They are understanding. That's not the way to achieve reality. So from ego to super ego. The future yogis have been moving. The seekers are the future yogis. And they have been wobbling from one to another. It's a dangerous game both ways. No doubt. But you are seeker. And they are respected. Loved and looked after and protected. And they achieve what they are asking for. They achieve it. They have to achieve it. Because behind all this game is a divine power which has worked it out so well, so beautifully has made you human being and is not going to fail when it has to give you that superhuman power. <clears throat> that is the power of your spirit that lies within your heart. That has to manifest. Now, you have your own concepts because of ego has concepts. Always ego will give you concepts about everything. That's why because these concepts never fit in with the reality, Christ was crucified. Because according to that, Christ should have been born to, uh, to Herod, not to Mary. According to them, it was too humble for God to be born like that. So they crucified him. The concepts that this ego tries to give you can be very dangerous too, about everything, about seeking, about realization, about everything it gives you concepts, means it closes your doors to reality. Keep yourself open to see what it is really, than to have a conception. So because of this wobbling, People have started conceiving things in imaginary world. 
Sometimes they move to the right or to the left and they start imagining, oh, this means that, this means that, this means that. And this imagination is so dangerous. Recently we have had a big accident with that in Brighton. One gentleman came and told them that he was Mr. Michael or whatever it is. People started believing he was St. Michael. Imagination starts coming up and can be very dangerous. Now the whole ego and superego play becomes imaginary. How long are we going to live with imagination? We have to face reality. And reality is beauty. Reality is joy. It is knowledge. It is the thing you have to have. How long are you going to be satisfied with artificial things? You are not. So, what is the reality? How are we to seek it? And how are we to receive it? Do not have conception. When you are amoeba, did you have any conception how human being is going to look? Did you have any conception about how Sahaja Yoga is going to work out in England? Do you have any conception even today how the whole world is going to be transformed? All these conceptions are conjectures. They are not the conceptions of the reality because you are not there from where you can see. And there is a difference between one and another. All these writers, I find somebody is saying this is the truth, another is saying this is the truth, third one is saying this is the truth, the psychologists are saying this is the truth. There is nothing common in them. And this is the problem for us to read them. One person you read, then you read another and the third. It's better to go to, to lunatic asylum these days than to go in the library and read any book. At least there you'll get treated for your troubles, while you'll get lunatic if you go to these libraries. Is that not? And the more you read, the more confused you get. This confusion is necessary because without confusion, you are not going to see in the right direction. The earnestness goes up to the point of <coughs> absolute emergency when the confusion is at its heart. You feel that now or never, you feel so desperate at that moment that if we are lost in this confusion, we are lost forever and something has to happen within us or something we have to face or to know or to realize within us. Otherwise, you are finished. Such an emergency when it comes into your mind, that's the point for Sahaja Yoga and there the light comes in. That emergency is settled down already, everywhere, in your mind itself. Because mind is running with the speed of 500 miles per hour. You cannot stop. It's mad. The way it thinks. I told you there was a doctor in Switzerland. He came, mother, do anything. You can cut my throat or you can take out any part of my mouth or face or anything that you want to do. But stop thinking. My thinking is horrible. That's why you are very fortunate very fortunate that you belong to that category and the whole situation is so emergent. And you are such fighters and such brave people that I'm sure you will get out of it and you'll save many more. Supposing such a situation arrives in India, most of them will commit suicide, I don't think. They will just shun. They won't be able to understand. Anyone like that goes there, they think, oh, he's mad, put him somewhere out, finished, you have nothing to do. They'll never fight it out. Because they're not used to this kind of a thing, this kind of a struggle, this kind of a complete emergence of all the problems of the world on their head. All these problems are <coughs> bombarded <coughs> on you through 
different medias and you see the whole world going into a shock. They don't read this, they are ignorant, they don't know anything about it, what's happening. Everybody today who is aware is feeling the emergency of something happening here. <coughs> something has to happen. They are aware that unless and until this happens, we cannot be safe. Atomic energy project, there is another one, the wars are going on, earthquakes are coming, people are saying that all the stars are going to fall into one line. Everybody is feeling there is going to be something horrible. The reason is, the last judgment has started. It has started. And you have to go through it. You are going to judge yourself. There is God within you which is going to judge you. And you are going to be chosen by your own efforts. And you are going to help others, many, many thousands of them, to be like. A certain number is needed, that's all. For every, every evolution, a certain number was needed to create a complete explosion. A certain number is needed and you are one of them who are the first to get it. So here is your Kundalini, which all of you have, except for demonic people, everybody has the Kundalini. The Kundalini exists within you, which you can see with your naked eyes in many people, which rises to all these centers which are within you, and pierces your fontaine bone area. Only what I do is I tell you what it means. For example, on your fingers, if you get full breeze, what does it mean? If you get all these fingers burning, what does it mean? If you get a particular finger burning more, what does it mean? I just decode it for you. Secondly, I am like candle which was enlightened first. And now I enlighten you, you can enlighten other candles. Ego can also start saying, why she? It's a very common thing. Why you? When a doctor asks me, why you? I said, you please come here. I'll be very happy. If you can raise the Kundalini, I'd be very happy to retire, sir. Because it's it's better to retire now. Because you get somebody like that, nothing like it. I mean, I would become a disciple of anybody who can raise the Kundalini. They may say so. They may talk about it. If they could do it, nothing else. Oh, I would retire. I'm looking forward to my retirement. I don't know when it would be. But that's the thing it is. You see, it has been given to me to do this job. Now what am I to do? I can't understand. So that you do not feel hurt and also I have a role of a mother. A mother who bears up everything. Everybody tries to crucify me. It's not a question of one crucifixion. I've seen many coming and being very rude to me, shouting at me, screaming at me, doing all kinds of things, saying things against me. So, <laughs> but I'm not. Everything I know because you are children, that's why you are kicking. You'll be all right. I know that you'll be all right. But it's better to be wise and to get your realization, to understand, the wiser you are, the easier it is for you to mature. You have to mature faster and faster with your wisdom and discretion. 
<coughs> Regarding the realization, nothing can be promised to anyone. There is no promise, you know, there is no enrollment, there is no fees, nothing. Like the trees, they do not enroll themselves somewhere that, oh God, oh, give us the sun, sun's rays, so that we come up. The sun is shining and all the trees are there. <coughs> some do not get the blessing, some do get. Some die at the draft stage, some grow up, become uh, heavily laden with fruits which they distribute to others and people say, all right, this tree has come up. They do not say that the sun has done anything, they just take it for granted. In the same way Sahaja Yoga is working out. It's just very simple, it's natural. There is, you cannot pay for it. How much do we pay to the sun or to the Mother Earth for giving us all that she is giving us? We are giving to all intermediaries, you see, who have created economic problems for us. But to the dying <coughs> people, we don't give anything. The real sources, we don't pay anything. In the same way, you cannot pay anything for it. It's so natural, it works out, it helps you, and you help us. This is what has to happen to most of the human beings. But first to the number I was telling you, which is required, and they have to be sensible, wise, open people, who have self-esteem. It's not meant for useless, frivolous, nonsensical. So one has to understand that as you are seekers, you have discarded many things which looked nonsensical to you. And today is the time for you to receive for which you have discarded all that the sense of your being, the meaning, the purpose of your being, why you have come on this earth, everything, all the knowledge of the world, everything for which you have come, for which you were created. The whole universe, the stars, or they are going now to Saturn. Why Saturn was created? What is Saturn? It's not even the dust particle of God Almighty Spirit. What is Saturn? <coughs> it's one of the seats of one of the centers is here. And the Vishuddhi Chakra is made out of Saturn. And the circle round it is nothing but the Sudarshan Chakra is described of Sri Krishna because Sri Krishna resides. Now what will they know about it? How are we to talk to them? You see, they have to become realized souls to know whether it is true or not. Because there is no way of judging it. By your imagination you cannot judge it. You have to know it through your feelings. This is what happens to you when you get realization. <coughs> that you get the cool breeze in your hands, all your fingers get enlightened, your palm gets enlightened, and your base of the palm, all of them are centers, seven centers are there these five, six and seven, and they all get enlightened by which you know what is what. Also you know if this is the truth or not, because if it is the truth, the vibration comes very much more. When it is the falsehood, it stops. There are so many permutations and combinations of these feelings which you learn, and you become a person, you become again and again, you become a person of a new awareness in which you start perceiving things through your feeling as reality. For example, if one person is sitting here, and if ten surgeries are trying on that person, they'll say the same thing about that. One gentleman came and asked me, Mother, why everybody is asking me, what about your father? I said, oh, right. what about your father? I also asked. He said, he died suddenly and I was this thing. I said, then that part is a little bit showing. He said, how do you know? I said, you will also know later. But he said, tell me how do you know? I said, very simple. If this finger is burning, that means your father's finger, something wrong with that. Everybody's this finger is burning, whether it is a child or a big person, 
they'll ask, what about the father? Now you tell about your father's problem and there is a way of correcting this problem. If you correct it, immediately you get your realization. <coughs> it's that simple. It's everything so simple in life. If you to see someone, what do you do? Do you think about it? You just see. It. <coughs> in the same way, when you get your realization, what do you do? You just feel. It's a vibratory awareness. Then you just start it feeling within yourself. Just start it feeling it. You see a person, you know it's that. He may tell you lies, doesn't matter. You know this. You may not tell that person diplomatically not to hurt the person, but you know this is the problem. But it's better if somebody tells you be thankful, get rid of it. Not to be angry. The last of all I have to tell you, because you have some who have come for the first time, that you can be misled. There could be a guru, so called, who might have misled. Or there could be somebody who might have misled. Still, because you are naive, maybe you may not have understood. But if somebody tells you that your void is catching, there is a wrong guru, better tell the name. It's better to get rid of it than to have it there. Because your realization is difficult and even if you get your realization, the Kundalini will suck back. It's better to tell and understand how to get it up. After all, Sahaja Yoga is only concerned with your well-being and not the well-being of all the uh, crooks of the world. Because people have an objection sometimes to me saying that she criticizes others. Do you mean to say that I should sit here and praise Mr. Hitler or someone who is even worse than that? <coughs> you need courage to face these horrible people. Only a mother can do it. And I have to tell and I will tell on the top of my voice that these devils and these negative forces which are trying to drag down my children are going to be doomed and they are going to go to hell. But you give them a passion of course. I am not afraid of them. That's one thing you should. They are afraid of me. <coughs> May God bless you all. <coughs>